Hey everybody, how are you doing? Today it's my birthday. Yes, it Happy is. Birthday, it's honey. my birthday, and we got to go to Bradshaw yesterday. Yeah. Yes, and that was so great. Um, we met a panda there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, and apparently panda was the way we got there. Yeah, that's so um, cool. And you know, my I call my daughter that. She always yeah. she looked like a panda bear when she was born. She had the big, <laughs> big, big, giant dark eyes and yeah. um, really light skin and dark, dark hair. And so she's still my panda today. She's got a big giant one in the room. It's like four foot tall. <laughs> yeah. I, I got it for for Christmas. I thought I don't know if she's gonna like this because it was like two years ago and she was like what twenty years old. Yeah. And um, but yeah, she did love it. Awesome. So anyway, Bradshaw, we had a great time and um, it was so great to be with you guys right. um they do need better sound equipment yeah <laughs> yes. i'm a sound snob but um <laughs> but anyway and i didn't get to see this setup i know chris did but i didn't get to see this setup so i don't know really you know kind of what's needed or, or they need, what they need a board they need some amps they okay. need it's, it's pretty so they don't everything. even have a board a sound board they've got a very small old box that okay it, it's kind of a soundboard but it's not a real soundboard hmm Wow. Okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, we did have a good time and we will be back. Um, I think so. You know, the CBCA yeah, for sure. yeah. and all they wanted us to come back. And you know what? We saw a guy, Larry Reedy, is it? Larry Reedy. That's right. I Larry to Reedy. Shout him out. And um, listen to me, y'all. We met him in Russ County Jail. We went to Russ County Jail to minister every single Monday night for 14 years. Wow, that's true. In a row. Yeah. And we found Larry there yeah. <laughs> over and over, right? He'd get out and come back. Back to jail, yeah. And um, we met him there, and he has a brother in Beto, right? James Reed, yes. And yes. what's so cool now is he is now um, in ministry at yes. Bradshaw. Yes. He has keys. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. a radio, and a radio yeah. walking yeah. around like you know he's a big stuff over <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, that's awesome. And, um, but look what God can do, that's you right. know. Yeah. And he has, of course, he's been there, and he has the heart for that. So he's providing, um, you know, people come hygiene. in yeah. hygiene, right? I didn't. Indigenous. I did yeah. not realize that they come in and don't really get that. I didn't either. No, they don't. Yeah, at all. So, so, is, so is that just Bradshaw? No, that's TDCJ. Wow. Yeah, you get a toothbrush. That's about it, and it's a little bit small one like yeah, that. Yeah, he said oh it was like goodness. nothing. Yeah. I did not know that. I thought I they either. got the bare minimum of things. No. Wow. Now they have these little bitty soaps. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, some people can't. I couldn't use them because I was allergic to them. So I had to, like, hustle for real soaps that you buy off commissary. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. you learn something new all the time. Yeah. Lord Jesus, wow. So um, anyways, okay, so we had a good time. We're going to be praying about that and, yes. you know, and things. So also just want to shout out real quick, Jeff Noble, who's the volunteer there that connected us. He's from my hometown, Winsboro. All right, And yes. he's going in and doing a program mm -hmm. and teaching the guys about fatherhood and about being a husband. He has and a just book. All Bible-based. It's a curriculum from a friend of his that he okay. teaches and has taught for years. And I just think it's so amazing that he he's never been been incarcerated, but he has the heart for the Amen. incarcerated. The heart He's of committed. God. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. All right. So let me, let's get a few things out. I wanted to thank you guys. Um, I got, you know, just letters of support saying, you know, don't, don't, don't be weary and we love mm. you. And, you know, what, yeah. regardless of what you've got to do and not do, we, we appreciate what you do do. Yes, and we know right. that it takes a whole lot of your time, finances, yeah. um, all those things. And so I did get a lot of those letters and I really appreciate that. They, they're really helpful. You know, I, I'd gotten a letter some probably a couple months ago and at the end of it the guy had signed it and said please don't go grow weary you're impacting my life right. oh, wow. and um you know wow wow yeah because sure. you know um as parents you know that that we do grow weary and we're tired with work with um you know emotional stresses life happens all around you but we know like we're the grown up. Right. <laughs> yes. um, we have, have to, to keep on, yeah. right? We have to keep on going regardless of what's happening. And, um, you know, so many times as a mama, when, um, especially I was a single mom, I think, and um, I had my two big ones. Um, it was just me and them then. And um, I might be, 
I might be crying and um, I, you know, they're coming on knocking on my door, mom, mom, you know, and I'm, you know, going to just a minute, you know, I'm getting it together, wiping the tears off my face, you know, putting my face on so that I can come out and say, what you need, you know? Um, and uh, the thing is that sometimes we have to do that in ministry too, you know, yeah. Yeah. you've got to put the tears away and um, know that God is with us yes. and that we're going to minister no matter what and that we love them and, and that we we want them to know, we want others to know that regardless of what's going on, he's still God, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, thank you for the letters of support. And um, I did get a letter from somebody saying, I hope you don't think bad of all of us now. And I oh, certainly God, no. don't. <laughs> and you know what? Let's talk about that for a minute because um, it ain't just prison people, right? right. It is right. not just inmates that right. are ungrateful or right. what have you, a few right. of them. It's all over your family. Come on, yes. right. right? Don't you yeah. got some crazy aunt or uncle, uh, right? Or yes. come on, everybody right. does. A brother <laughs> or sister or, or mama or daddy, unfortunately, right. yeah. or even a crazy grandma, <laughs> right? Come on. Um, so, so it's not, you know, and, and I tell you what, and, you know, it reminded me because I kind of wanted didn't, didn't want to address some issues because I thought I don't want the free world people that are listening to go like, oh, you know, they're all bad. But the truth is that it's everywhere. Right. right. And that's why your Thanksgivings and Christmases are all messed up because of your family. Right. So right. so that's the way we are. We're a perfectly normal, dysfunctional family. <laughs> right. And um, and that's how it is. And so, no, I don't. And, and, and the truth is. Right. It's been so few that we've had complaints or anything right, like that right. from um, the majority are so, so great and so grateful. And so I, I think there's a smaller number in there than there's actually out here. Right. So, okay. Right. Uh, before we get away too far from Bradshaw, mm -hmm. I wanted to say thanks to Travis for manning the camera for me. You know, there's oh. only one of me. I yeah. had three cameras. The, the guys in the office watched one. I had one. And Travis stood over there. Thank you, Travis. The whole time Thanks, Travis. And watch my camera for me. That's so Thanks awesome. So much. That's so awesome. Yeah. And we got to take cameras. That's yeah, so cool. So yep. you are going to put a little bit of video yeah, so in. I'm going to put some video. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. And so what else? Um, I, I we, we're going to quickly um, talk about. Um, God of the impossible. We were on that, you know, because I got a letter. I got a couple, I think, from guys that say, I'm just having such a hard time believing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I want you to know, we are going to talk about God of the impossible um, soon and maybe even get in, into the, a little bit of it today. We had that like the first year of radio. Um, our theme was God of the impossible, right? Um, God of deliverance. God of deliverance, where you have struggled with something your whole life, addiction or um, effects from molestation and abuse and neglect and all anger problems yeah. and jealousy and all kinds of things. God is a God of deliverance yes. and a God of miracles, Come right? On. And a God of healing. It's his specialty. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, people that say, like, I find myself crying. Like a guy said, crying with, with <laughs> you know, yeah. what's going on here, <laughs> right. you know, before yeah, I know yeah. it, my face was wet and I didn't yeah. know that that was what's going on on. Um, he's the God of healing and, yeah, right. and that happens too. So I did want to let you know that um, somebody wrote me and told me that Focus on the Family has a podcast that you guys can get to on Securus. And um, they have some podcasts dedicated fully to the love languages. Oh, wow. And so they're in detail on each one. Awesome. So you go look for Focus on the Family in your audio podcast and maybe type in love language and you can probably hear more in detail on that. So I'm really excited yeah, about that, that. Yeah. Yeah, um, because they'll be able to learn more about their love languages. And so I wanted to tell you about that. What else you got? Well, we do have some units coming up. We're excited about Yay. those. Cofield every month, August 20th, uh, third Sunday. We're going to be at Cofield unit in Texas, Santa Rosa. Santa Correctional Rosa. in Florida. Santa, Santa Rosa. 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 Yeah. <laughs> August 26th, Saturday. We're very, very excited. Looking forward to meeting yeah, all you guys. Back the house, please. Absolutely. Uh, and then we've got a new unit to announce on September 29th and September 30th. We're going to be at Lionel Unit for the Lanau. Jam the Rec Yard. Okay. okay. Event. So we're yeah. excited. We're going to have. We're going to jam that wreck yard. Yes, yes, yes we, we are. are. <laughs> and we're looking forward to it. And we're hopefully bringing our cameras and we hope to see all the guys. That's that exciting. Yes. That yeah. is awesome. I do have a family shout out here. And, and remember, don't send any more because it will not make it. Um, we were supposed to end June 30th and we went on to July because people did not understand. So um, if I find any more, I'll do it. 
I, I'm telling you what are uh, some are lost that sent them to me insecure is because I, I can't, it won't scroll down. It won't let me get to those letters. Um, I think I know that brain sent some for sure and things and I, I just can't get to it. So yeah. um, please forgive me for that. But I can't, I cannot scroll down my my securities will not allow me, I guess, because I have too many too letters many. and yeah. things like that in there. All right. So this is from um, Joshua Miller. Um, shout out to his wife, Rusty, Dawn, uh, Children's Sky, Nevaeh, Richardson, Jason Smith, Morgan, No Runner, Haley. Um, let's see. Joshua Miller, my twins, Caden and Kaylin. Uh, let's see. It says Jimmy Lynn Miller and Jocelyn Miller. Rochelle Morales, Michelle, I don't know if it's Pilars or Pilons because his mm. writing, right? Um, Harry, and it says poop. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. If that's a nickname, you may have won. Right. Anyway, Skeletor, Kimberly Houston, Shelby Scullin, Chuck D., Jesse Bettis, and the rest of the crew, you know who you are representing my hometown. I don't know. But anyway, may you all be filled with love and peace. I love you all. So as much as we could read, we did that, right? Okay. And speaking okay. of hometowns, we got a new pin this oh, cool. week. It's hey. Batavia, New York. Okay. Welcome to Batavia, New wow. York. And everybody awesome. that's yeah. there. That's so awesome. You'll yeah. have to show them the... Yes. And, and then put the picture up of, you know, I think we only have got one family picture that's yes. got the real V that shirt. Put right. that up. We'll, we'll do that as long as we can, you know? Yeah. If we get too many at some point and we can't do it no more, but we'll, I, I want to do it as long as we can. Yeah. Um, let me read a little bit of this letter, Real Vida. Thank you. Just doesn't seem enough when I express how powerful your team is opening the eyes of strong-willed men within this prison. It is amazing how these men hear the music, set their tablet down, and come back later for the sermon and come shortly after with questions. Thank mm. God. My name is John Waldrep, and I'm in prison in East Arkansas Regional Unit, known in Arkansas as the Brickyard. Mm. Most here know me as Wally. I am free roaming. I'm a free roaming counselor. By that, I mean I belong to no program and I am working on my bachelor's in Christian counseling through correspondence. I also repair electricity, ACs and electronics as well as general maintenance and key control. I am not very good at evangelizing, but I now have a tool, a God-given tool to say, hey, listen to this rapper and tell me what you think or listen to this rocker that often breaks away the wall and allows me to open up and find a way to connect. Awesome. I truly wanted to write and thank you for all the time and effort you both have applied to this ministry. It is amazing how something so simple as a song wow. could bring some of the toughest men to ask so deep a question wow. as we have seen here lately. Thank you so much. Um, wow. And that's yeah. cool, right? And, cool. and so, you know, use that. You guys go ahead and fish with that fish in line. I'm that's telling right. you, it's real good. And the fish are biting. Yeah, come on. And so if you, yeah. you know, you know, ask somebody, you say, hey, what type of music you like? And then you can go and find it. We're going to have a surprise one today. I've been I've been trying hard to get this type of music. And um, Alex Erraso, if that's any um, clue for you, <laughs> is going to love it, love it, love yeah. it. And they're top of the line. So I am so excited. And And like the rappers are all very connected. Like they all know each other. Um, apparently um, the genres do that because they all know each other too. So that's a good thing, right? Because yes. if we can yeah. get one and not one more. down, it'll be like dumb and nose, mm -hmm. right? Come on. Okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm so glad about that. You've got a letter, Sam, don't you? Yes. Okay, so this letter says, I just want you all to know that I never believed in the Father upstairs until I started watching you guys. Wow. You have changed my life. Wow. As of right now, I'm in the county jail. I was looking at two life sentences as of last week. God has blessed me to work it down to 30 years. I just want you guys to know if it wasn't for you guys, I would have given up a long time ago. And because of you, I stopped banging Northside and started to bang God's side. Come on. And okay. I would like to <laughs> shout out to all my brothers and sisters who are lost locked up and just want everyone to know that if God can work in my life, he can work in your life as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Awesome. That may be a shirt. Awesome. Yeah. Banging yeah. God's side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on. Real Vida. That shirt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you haven't noticed, I don't know if the cameras are catching it. Oh, yeah. um, catching we got a drawing, you know, we keep putting, we put drawings and stuff up um, on the table and we're going to keep doing that because it's my podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do what I want. And yeah. so um, anyway, that somebody drew me and Jeremy, many have and, um, and this one came and it's, it, that's the only one that drew me with my curly hair. <laughs> yeah. right, that's my actual hair. My hair is very curly. I straighten it sometimes. But that's the only person that drew it with that. And then beside it, wow. drum roll, yeah. we have Everett Drew, the water bottle baptism. And it's so beautiful. 
to me. It's so expressive. It shows the pleasure of God in faith, and it's so amazing. Yes. And um, yeah, I don't need any more opposition to that. So, Mr. Stringfellow, please keep your letters. And um, anyways, um, so whoever's drawn the water bottle baptism, like I have seen in my head, like many different pictures. And um, like I've seen like God's big hand, right, pouring out this big water bottle mm. and it just splashing down, you know, raining down like a waterfall Come on. on someone. I have seen his hands open with somebody knelt before him, right, um, with his acceptance and his love. I have, you know, had so many pictures in my yeah. head of, of the beauty of this. And, and by the way, there are some girls also doing that. And, um, you know, it's just it's just beautiful. So yeah. if, you, if you are drawing it, let God do in his way. You don't have to draw both guys. If you just see the hands of God, if you, you know, however you see it, however yeah. God reveals it to you in, in your spirit, go ahead and do that you know. Mm -hmm. Sam, you got some scripture. I do. So I was uh, reading in Psalm 106 uh, verse 4 and it says, remember me Lord when you show favor to your people. Come near mm. and rescue me. Amen. Let me share in the prosperity of your chosen ones. Let me rejoice in the joy of your people. Let me praise you with all those who yes. are your heritage. And I'll I just was hearing, count me in, God. Yeah, yes. don't don't count me out. Come on. Right. And then I sometimes I just kind of yes. open up to different pages in the Bible. And then I was in Zechariah chapter nine, uh, verse eleven, and it was almost like God was answering huh. this person's cry. And it says, "Because of the covenant I made with you, sealed with mm. blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless yeah. dungeon. Come, Come back to the place of safety, all you prisoners who Come still on. have hope. I promise this very day." that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. It says, Judah is my bow and Israel is my arrow. Mm. Jerusalem is my sword. And like a warrior, I will brandish it against the Greeks. Mm. So it was like God was saying, you are not counted out. Come on. Like I am coming to save you. Just Amen. come mm. right back to the place of safety, which is who I am Amen. and keep your hope. You know what? I mean, what, what, could we just talk about the water bottle baptism I and mean, seeing Everett's picture is so beautiful. But that's that's who, who they are, yeah. right? That's who we've all been been at different moments and times in our life, God, don't count me out. Yes. Yes. All of us. Like, let me be baptized. Like, God, let me be in on this glory and this salvation. Yeah. Let me be in on your love and your favor, God. Let me be in on your presence. Don't count me out because I'm stuck here in SEG wow. or, or, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't come to you. Don't count me out, God. Yeah. And, and, and here he is extending his hands, his arms in pleasure and love. I will not count you out, right? Yeah. And finds a way for a blessing no matter where we're at. If we make our bed in hell, he is there. Yeah. And so it's just an amazing, amazing mm -hmm. thing. And with that, right, um, I got this like a week or probably two weeks ago, mm -hmm. I think, um, from a Seger. Oh, my goodness. I bawled my eyes out for probably two hours. Just so beautiful to me. And... Um, he drew his seg cell, right? And here's the table. I don't know if we can get this or Chris will have to show it. On the table here, there's the tablet. Mm. And on the tablet, you can see the real Vida Mike. And he's just got awesome. done watching it, right? And he's got his shoes by the seg door. Then his little slot there that says real Vida. It's got a scripture, which is 1 Thessalonians 2, 5. I think it's 5 through 9, which is so good. Mm. And there's, I, I what I thought was strange when I looked at it, that is that a tree? There's a tree mm -hmm. in the middle of his cell. And when mm. I looked at the fruit on the tree, it has little real Vida microphones. And there he is in surrender, his life to God. And then I, I read his letter and I just... It says so much on, on, on such a deep level. It says, real vida. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. So I hope with this, you will understand what you really do for us in SEG. Then the scripture. I don't think anyone can feel it, and read it and not think of real vida. You have fruit growing in concrete and steel. Wow. If that is not proof of God's power, I don't know what is. I'm no artist like Sam's son, but I'd hopefully, but hopefully it's enough. Y'all have been working the soil for years, planting seeds. Now's the time you made fruit grow where there was none before. Now God's collecting us child by child. The Bible says they'll know us by our fruit. This is real vida, fruit. We may as well have our address in heaven on it. Thank you all for, for not forgetting about SEG. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Beautiful. And and you know the yes. Oh my mm. goodness. And that the words of you have fruit growing in concrete and steel. Wow. Yeah. And here's this tree growing out of the concrete, you know? Mm. But it, it it's not even just that and that's amazing in and of itself that there's fruit where nobody thought there would be yeah, in prisons and jails yeah. across the country. Yeah. Growing behind bars of steel and concrete. But not only that, it's the people like him. And I, I'm going to read his testimony soon. But he had a heart and a mind of concrete and mm. steel. Yeah. And that there's fruit growing in those people that no one would have ever, ever dreamt possible, even the other prisoners. Yeah. And so that is what's so amazing and what the power of God can do. You Absolutely. Know? All right. We're going to open our Bibles to Esther uh, chapter 1. Yeah, I got this some years ago, and it was in a new way. I'd never heard it. My dad was a pastor, and I'd been to church uh, so much in my life. And I heard much about Esther, actually, um, but I never heard it in this way. And so I want you to know, those of you that are new to God, that there are levels and onions and layers of God. And um, in every book, he's represented, right? So if you went to Bible school or you do, they'll call it sometimes types and shadows of Christ. And so you'll see him in every book. You'll see him in Joseph, right? Um, Even his name comes from it, from Yeshua. And um, Joseph um, is sold by his brothers, uh, just as Jesus was betrayed by his own brothers, right? And so old and um, yet he rose to the top. And so um, you can see it in the kinsman redeemer, right? With Boaz and he is a type of Christ, right? And you can see it in just every book. You can see Christ in one way or another. And so it has been said by so many, including rabbis and, you know, people like that, like um, preachers and scholars. We don't know why Esther is in here. We don't see him in this book. And so God took me there some years ago, and um, God is louder, I believe, in this book than than almost any other, or certainly just as loud. Yeah. And you can see certainly who he is here. And so when he took me to Esther, and he said, I want you to go to Esther, I, he wanted me to see clearly. And, and the only thing I've ever heard about Esther is about Esther in chapter two, right? And so, you know, there are, you know, take me to the king, right? That song and there's um little books on Esther and there's movies, One Night with the King. And there's, um you know, little, uh you know, they put the little Bible th- things, markers where they've got, and everything's about Esther and um, how great she is, right? She's so great. Um, But they they talk bad about the king. Hmm. However, in chapter two, when, when Esther's coming before him, they say, this represents God. This is God in Esther chapter two. And they're right. And God said to me, though, um, in chapter one, when he called for her to come before the royal um, palace and all those that were looking upon her, and he wanted to show her off, um, when he called for her, if in, in your Bible study notes sometimes and in commentaries, they'll say he was probably drunk and shouldn't have called her. Maybe mm. it wasn't in line with the law of the Persians and the Medes. They, this is what they say, right? And so they, they always talk bad about the king. And God said to me, listen, if I, if the king represents me and it is God in the second chapter of Esther, and I said, yes, God, he said, then I am also God in the first chapter for I change not, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, today, and forever, I am the same. So if I'm God in the second chapter, then I'm God in the first. There you go. All right, God. So I said, okay. So when he got the perspective of God in me and I went to look at this, it was loud. So it says in the first, I'm reading on the New Living Translation, these events happen in the days of King Xerxes. King Xerxes, Xerxes is a title, not a name. And it means, um, you know, uh, like Pharaoh or Caesar. It's it's a, it's, it's, it's bountiful or or one or venerable one. It's it's a good Mm, things, right? This one, it's, it's, it's a title Um, who reigned over 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia. And I'm hoping that Chris will be able to get um, some pictures of like the palace of Versailles and um, you know, the Louvre over there that we've been to. And um, these palaces are so shocking and amazing with springs and valleys and hills and mountains and um, forests and rooms 
beyond what you could ever imagine. Just one ceiling, I'm talking today, that was built in the 1500s, 1600s. Yeah. Um, one ceiling in one room, you could stare at that ceiling all day. Yeah. It, I mean, it has built in these intricate details of, of gold and marble and sculptures and paintings. And it's just Picasso everywhere you look. I mean, it's just yeah. shocking. And so um, this is how it was, right? This is a, a, a royal palace. And so I want you to get the picture in your mind. In the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. He invited all the military officers of Persia and media, as well as the princes and the nobles of the provinces. The celebration lasted 180 days, a tremendous display of opulent wealth of his empire and the pomp and splendor of his majesty. And so, um, you know, it, it's 180 days. And I want you to think about this, you know, the most lavish wedding that you can think of, Princess Diana, you know, we all watched, right? Yeah. Sometimes when there's, uh, you know, the Kardashian, when she, one of her many marriages, um, <laughs> right, when she got married, K and K, right? Everybody yeah. watched and, yeah. and and we're watching all these lavish, we're talking about, and no matter who you are, and, and you're trying to have a small wedding, right? We tried to have a small wedding. <laughs> and, um, and we had a small wedding, it was small. But it kept growing, right? Like, well, like, well I'm going to go get the dress, right? And then, well, you know, we do want sunflowers. And, yeah. uh, well, let's get this certain food. And uh, now we're we just little by little, you're adding cost mm. before you know it. Can you imagine this is like the most lavish wedding you have ever had for 180 days? Wow. wow. Yeah. Whew. How yeah. expensive is that? Yeah. Right. And so, um, but everybody's there. It's all the who's who of the time, every noble and official. It's um, and like we just talked about, you know, um, you know, Russia and there's Putin and um, you know, the Obamas and Trump and all these different people. And, you know, Obama was known for parties, but o Obama partied in the White House and um and there and Putin came too, but they don't like each other. They didn't like each other, they mean mugged each other in a picture. It was going around all over, it was viral. Um, supposedly they didn't like each other yeah. or they were playing around or something. But um, but they're still there. And there are many um officials um, that don't like each other in presidents and, you know, things of nations, leaders of nations, they don't like each other, but they're still at the party. Yeah. Right. Because the who's who is invited to the party. And so that's how it was. And he had everybody there at the party and had it for 180 days and it was showing everything he had. Okay. So when we went to London, my husband and I went to London a few years ago, um, we were going to go see sites and seeing what we were seeing. And there was a castle that's, what, 1,000 years old, mm -hmm. right? Tower of London. Yeah, and it has all the, uh, what is it, the gold, what's it called? Of, oh, yeah, it's the, the royal Buckingham. jewels. The yeah. royal jewels, there yes. you go. The royal jewels are in this castle. And this is one of the sites we're going to see. And I'm thinking, how many jewels can there be? Right. <laughs> so I'm going to pay this money and go in there for five minutes and look at their jewels and come back out. Like this is, I don't think this is worth it. Right. But we went anyway and we went in and oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't five minutes of jewels. Yeah. And the shocking thing is a whole cape netted of just pure gold. Yeah. Right. Fine gold that's kind of woven. Yeah. yeah woven yeah. in just, I mean, there's no explaining. No. There were punch bowl, a punch bowl as big as this table, a thick gold, that thick on all sides. And the ladle to pull the punch out was also pure gold. And it was intricately designed with cherubims and all kinds of things mm. on just the punch bowl. We could have just stared at the punch bowl all day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, crowns and jewels and um, just silverware, but not silverware, goldware, <laughs> goldware, gold <laughs> um, yeah. you know, <laughs> plates of gold, you name it. I mean, I could never have imagined all that was in there. That was what parties were for, for the king mm. was to show their pomp and their splendor mm, Yeah, to intimidate, to shock and awe, right? Right. To, uh, I mean, it to show all that they had. And this is what was going on for 180 days. Okay. So it represents God, our father, his pomp and his glory, his majesty, his mm. miracles, and his yeah. awesome power that he was showing to the first party. And the first party was the Jews. Yeah. It wasn't that we were to be left out, but he was choosing a people just like Rome was going and conquering people and showing them how to live. Yeah. And so it was a spiritual thing, right? 
It represents showing how to live, how to love, right? How, how, how to worship God and that he was the only God and he was doing it for them so that, that they could then show others, right? And so that's what was happening in the first party. And so the first party has always happened and it happens today. The who's who always gets to go to party, right? Now, when it was all over um, in verse five, and I'm gonna go through this as, as quick as I can, but try to get everything I can out. When it was all over, the king gave a banquet for all the people from the greatest to the least who were in the fortress of Susa. It lasted for seven days. Seven is a number of completion, right? In other words, it wasn't complete yet until mm. the second party. Yeah. So it was after the first party of the Jews. It was after the first party of, um, you know, people that, you know, Billy Graham and A.A. A. Allen and Catherine Kuhlman and um, Smith Wigglesworth and, you know, Yee Avila for those Hispanics and um, all these people, Luis Palau, you know, um, who was a little after those. But um, all these people and all this glory of God and all these miracles and all the who's who of the Christians, you know, the church um, before the church was just, you know, when, when I was a little girl even. The church, um, you didn't see churches like you do now where people just go in in jeans, right? And they're just themselves, you know, everybody's all dressed up and, you know, everybody just was so proper. They're all a bunch of school marms and um, in, in, in the churches, you know, and you just felt odd and terrible. They, you couldn't go in, you know, and you didn't, didn't belong and you weren't clean enough. And, you know, that's the first party people. So even the church has had a first party people, right? Yeah. Even the prison system right now has a first party people. Come on, yeah, those those right. that have, have earned it, right? Those have become field ministers, those who have gotten saved, been saved for a while. Those that are the chapel workers and the worship players and, you know, all these things are the, the workers, the prayer teams. And um, they seem to be, yes, the first party where the seggers have been and the G4s and the G5s. And they're like, no, I'm a G5, man. I, mm. You know, I'm a G4. I got in trouble. I... I haven't been very good in here. But now there was a second party because God is a just and a fair God. Come on. And he said, I'm leaving no man behind. Come on. Yeah. I'm leaving no one out. Leave no one out. Count me in because he ain't leaving me out. Come on. Yeah. Count me in, God. Don't forget about me. Come on. I need baptism to God. Yeah. I need salvation to God. I need your healing, God. I need you to speak to me, God. I need to know that I am worthy, God. Count me in. And so God heard the cry of those said that count me in, people. Count me in. They're the second party. They're B-side. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, they're north side on Beto. Yeah. They're the ones that are G4s. And G. Count me in. Come on. I know you thought you could count Count me out, come yeah. on. but you better get to looking around because he said, count me in. Come on. So it was the second party and it's all over. And now he said, I want from the greatest to the least. And it lasted for seven days and it was held in the courtyard of the palace garden. And the courtyard was beautifully decorated with white cotton curtains and blue hangings, which were fastened with white linen cords and purple ribbons to silver rings embedded in marble pillars. Gold and silver couches stood on mosaic pavement of marble, mm. mother of pearl and costly stones. Come on. Mm. That looks just like that. I mean, that's when we go, yeah. right? Yeah. The palaces, they've got marble floors. There's 10 people can walk up those stairs at yeah. once on these marble stairs. Wow. Mm. It is just yeah, shocking. Amazing. Okay. And so he said, I'm not leaving anybody out. Now this was unheard yeah. of. This is what's happening right now. This is one of the ways we know. We were just talking about the last days and how we mm. know. This is one of the ways that we know because it's mm. the last days. And he said, I'm not leaving anyone out. So go to Polanski, come on. And yeah. I want you to go shut your church down, which is what we did, a free world church eight years ago. And I want you to go to the prisons because yeah. those are my people too, come, come on. on. Yeah. And I want you to let them know that I'm counting them in. Stand up and be counted. Rise up and receive your miracle. Come on, stand up yeah. and take up your mat and walk. Get out of that yeah. wheelchair. Yes. You don't need to roll around like that come anymore on. because I have healed you and I have delivered you. Come on. And yeah. I'm pouring out my spirit on you. All right. Jesus. And so this was going on. And listen, I, I want to go for a minute for those of you that know New Testament because they're one and the same, yes. right? 
And there are people that are like, we don't live the Old Testament anymore and we're in the New Testament. And the, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Yes. And the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Come on. Come on. But they are one in the same. And so I yeah. do want to go to the same story in the New Testament and you'll see it now. Your eyes will be open and you will, your scales will fall off come on, and come you on. will no longer be blind. Amen. Luke chapter 14. Hmm. And verse 12, and I'm telling you, this is one and the same story. Then he turned to his host and he said, when you put on a luncheon or a banquet, that's just what they did. He said, don't invite your friends, ha, huh? your brothers, your relatives, your rich neighbors. What have we been telling you, right? Yeah. When you make your spread, when you have a special church service, come on, when you get the Kairos group going, why don't we go and invite some others, get some, some, some of those who nobody thought would get saved. Get me some gangsters. Come new on, blood. you know, and yeah. let's come on. Let's get some new blood. Somebody come who on. ain't scared. Somebody who's going to fight the and fight in the spirit. Come on. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my gosh. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Right. And so, you know, I had gotten a letter not too long ago and I understand, right? Um, and he said, you know, I don't watch all of your podcasts. I don't watch um, the shout outs. And, and I, I don't, I think he's a good guy, you know, he said, but the thing is, he said, some of you calling out you, some of the names you're calling out there, they're just, they're just gangsters, you know, they ain't saved. Listen, I ain't looking for the saved. Come on. Right. I ain't looking for those who are well. He said, I can't just seek and save I, I'm, those I'm who not are looking for those who yeah. already know Jesus. Come on. I'm not looking for those who are already walking that walk. Let's, I love you too. And if you get something from the word, amen, come on. And we are all in this together and we get to pray together. Yeah. We get to minister together. We get to co-labor together. But I'm looking for the lost. Come on. Those yes. that are sick, those that are hurting, those that are broken, those that think they, they're they stuck in this lifestyle and they can't get up. Come on. They fall in and they can't get up, but we're going to pull them up <laughs> yeah. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. 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 All right. And so he said, when you put on a luncheon or a banquet or a spread, come on or a Kairos program or something yeah. like that. He said, don't invite your friends and your brothers and the other field ministers, right? And the other um, life coaches and the other peer educators, right? Uh, when you have the prayer circle, let's not exclude anybody. Come on. Mm. He said, "For if you invite them, they will invite you back, your friends. And, and they that will be your only reward. Instead, invite the poor. Come on, the indigent, the broken, the hurting. Come on. The gangster, the nobody, the nothing. Yeah. The mentally ill, the crippled, the lame and the blind. They can't see. They don't have vision. They need you to guide them and lead them. Those that can barely walk from the hurt. They've fallen mm. and they've been broken and they're crippled. And then at resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Hearing this, Come a man on. sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with the story, a man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. Mm. Hmm. I have just bought a field and must inspect it, one said. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me, my Ford. I just got it. Huh? My Dodge Ram. Please excuse me. Another said, I now have a wife. I just got married and I got a girlfriend, right? And so I can't come. And the servant returned and told his master what they said. How embarrassing, how terrible, right? I would hate to go mm -hmm. tell my master after all he'd done and all the sacrifice and the inviting and, and spread the spread with the best food. And he thinks he's inviting his friends and those that love him. And then they said, no, I can't come. I go to sleep before 10 o'clock at night. Uh oh. Remember KNES when we started on radio? We thought all our homies were gonna be there from Beto, right? And But they were all in the chapel and they were already all saved and everything and they were full. So when we invited them to the banquet, so many of them said, no, excuse me, I can't come, all right? And he said here, I've just bought five pairs of oxen. I want to try them out. I can't come. The servant told his master, his master was furious. He said, you know what? Go quickly. Go into the streets. Mm. Go to Seg. Yeah. Go to death row. Go to the G4s. I want you to go to the G5s. I want you to go to B-side. Yeah. I want you to go out to the boonies to Lanau where no one else goes. Right. Go there. Come on. I want you to go to Billy Moore. Not many go there. 
I want you to go and invite those. The crippled, the poor, the blind, the lame, the gangsters. Yeah. After their servant had done this, he reported there's still room for more. So his master said, go out to the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full for none of those I first invited will even get the smallest taste of my banquet. Mm. We were just talking about before we started today over in our living room, right? The scripture that said, by this time tomorrow, right? There's going to be food so much. Yeah. The guy, like, even if you open the windows of heaven, that he said, you know what? You're going to see it, but you won't partake of it. You're going to see it. It's going to happen, but you're not going to partake of it because the just must live by faith, yes. right? We must believe his word and what he said. And so here we are with the second party. This was unheard of. Listen, I got to get you to understand this was unheard of. This is like, uh, you know, president right now, Trump or President Obama or whoever it was. The president, he don't no longer have a wife. And he says, anyone gets to come to try out to be my wife. Anyone. And they said, anyone, what do you mean anyone gets to come try out to be your wife? And they said, you mean you want us to go to the other nations and um, would, you, would you want us to get like the, 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 the head politicians? Would you want us to get princes? And, um, you know, would you like us to go to the kings? And, uh, and he said, no, anyone, anyone pull up at the projects. <laughs> 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 this is what happened, y'all. <laughs> okay. He pulled up at the projects yeah. with the bus, right? <laughs> and said, anyone that wants to come, Right. Grab your weave. Right. You know, <laughs> and, um, you know, get your chocolates yeah. on. Come on. Mexicanas, cause it's time to come. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, all, all, all the cholas are coming and, and everything. You're like, Wait, what? We get to try to be his wife. What? Right. And it's just like, um, um, what, what's that girl? There's that girl, Nicki Minaj and then the other. Oh, oh, I just seen, she just threw her microphone. She's so ghetto, right? <laughs> okay, Some, Cardi B. Okay, Cardi B. <laughs> See, you knew it, right? This was just this week, right? It was it was viral because she, apparently she was saying something to, to them about to splash her or something. Mm -hmm. So somebody did with their water cup or whatever. And she got so mad that she took that hard mic and just threw it. But she wow. hit some other person and make it some charges now, right? Oh, wow. So here came Cardi B, right? <laughs> to be the wife. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, listen, I'm telling you, this is how it was. This yeah. is crazy. This has never happened before or after. Has any other kingdom or nation or president said, go to the projects and see if there's somebody who wants to try out to be my wife. Right. <laughs> that doesn't happen. It wow. doesn't happen. It's but it's representative of a time. And that time mm. is now. Yeah. And he's saying, if you want to be my wife, because that's the bride of Christ. If you want to be used of me, if you yeah. want to perform miracles, if you want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, if you want to walk by or lay hands or command a demon to come out of anger or, or a demon that has, has, has been held on from molestation and, and sexual perversion, and you want to do that, I'm going to give you the power. Come on. I'm, I'm going to say, come up in my house and I'm going to show you my fullness and my glory so that you can spread it to others. Oh my gosh. All right. So here I come. <laughs> B-side is coming and eats on it, right? And so so this is what happened. And it said the drinks were served in golden goblets of many designs. And there was an abundance of royal wine. Wine represents the Holy Spirit of God. Come on. He's saying, listen, he said, I'm going to give my Holy Spirit. And in fact, he said, look, there was an abundance of royal wine reflecting the king's generosity. And by edict of the king, no limits were placed on the drinking for the king had instructed all his palace officials to serve each man as much as he wanted. Come on, Come on. Wow. Preach that. As much as he wanted. In other words, you can have as much as my spirit yeah. as you want. Come on. You can have wow. as much of my healing as you'll accept. You can pour out on others. You can have so much that you're overflowing. Come on. Yeah. And so that not only did you get that healing for yourself, but you begin to heal and get those saved around you, which is happening in great numbers yes. all over the place. Just And we were just at um, yesterday. Bradshaw. Um, Bradshaw. They're telling us that the Seggers, uh, a bunch of Santa Muerte are giving that up. We don't need Come no on. holy death. Come on. We need a live Jesus Christ. Come 
Come, come on, on. Man. And, right. and a bunch of the Muslims are getting saved, and and, yeah. and many of them are. We know we've got people that are writing us from all over the place, and and and, and all kinds of faiths and Odinists and all kinds of people that are coming in droves to Christ. People yeah. that didn't know Him, people that didn't serve anything but themselves. A bunch of selfish people, yeah. their own gods, are running to Christ now. Come on, they're finding Him. They're finding joy in the midst yes. of sorrow. They're finding light in the midst of darkness. Come on, because God is with them. Mm. All right. Wow. And so you can have as much as you want. Yeah. Ay, 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 right? Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. And so, you know, when I came to God, I'm so glad for this, right? I grew up in a de denomination where um, there were a lot of rules. There were a lot of man rules for sure. But one of the things I am so grateful for, there was the power of God. No one ever told us that we couldn't. No one ever said a woman could not find him or that they couldn't be as full of him, come on, or, mm. or that they could not speak for him and tell what Jesus had done yeah. in their life. No, no one ever said that to us. Thank you, God, that they never put a limit on me in that way. And so I, I, I believed God, right? And so let me tell you about one of the miracles um, where Chris lives right now on that property. Um, we had had two mobile homes where we took people in, in Henderson, Texas, when we lived there and helped them get on their feet, coming off of drugs, coming out of prison or homeless. And um, we did that for years. When we moved to Tyler, I'm trying to make this short. We moved to Tyler and we were looking for mobile homes that way. I wanted to have at least an acre with two mobile homes on it, fenced in um, near town, but right out of town. And I couldn't find that. And it was so costly. I kept finding trailers and they were dumpy and um, they were too much money and I didn't have the money. And so I didn't know what to do. And after nine realtors and lots of money and gas, hundreds of dollars on my Tahoe, I had a Tahoe at the time and all that, I, I had a place where I wanted it. And so I told my husband, let's go um, to your office and then we'll start driving out of Tyler on 31 towards Kilgore. And the first trailer that we see, let's open our eyes, right? And look, the first mobile home we see that looks like what I want, let's stop. And he's like, okay. So we drive out and the first mobile home that we see, um, I could tell it's a four bedroom for sure, but it doesn't have any land and I need some land. And so not that one. The very next one I could tell is a three bedroom. It is enclosed in at least an acre and fenced in. And I think that is exactly what I want but it's not for sale, okay? So I tell my husband, pull over on the side of the road. So we pull over just on the on the side of the other, the road or the highway on the side. And I say to my husband, I say, honey, you know, in the Bible, yes, Jesus pointed at a tree, a fig tree, and he commanded it to die for it was not producing fruit in its season, Right? And so he, he, he commanded it to die. And he said, yes. And I said, well, why can't I point at a trailer and command them to get out? Because I need it for the purposes of God. And I said, right. And he said, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, okay. So I pointed my finger at the trailer and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to get out of the trailer that I need for the purposes of God in Jesus name. And that was on Sunday. I came back on Monday um, after that, and the trailer was up for sale. And so I pulled in there and I called the number and the guy said, can you come back around five o'clock? It was like 10 in the morning. And I said, no, I really can. And he said, all right, I'll be there in a few minutes. So he came and he showed me the trailer and I knew it was exactly what I wanted. I was so excited <laughs> and I knew God had done it. And um, so when I was leaving, I said, listen, my husband's an attorney and he's down the road right here. I said, tomorrow at six o'clock, I'm going to give you a check. Um, right now to hold it. I want you to go take that sign down. Um, <laughs> and tomorrow at six o'clock, you come to the office and we're going to sign the papers. And he was like, oh, okay. I kind of stunned, you know? <laughs> and um, and so um, the next day he comes into the office and he, he looks like he's lost his best friend. Like he's like, with his face down and uh, looks discouraged. And um, so I come to him and I think, I wonder what happened to him. Poor guy, he may have had a hard day. And so I said, uh, is your wife excited? And he said, about what? And I said, well, sir, you sold your trailer in 30 minutes. I, I would think you'd be pretty excited. And, and he said, I love that place. He said, I just bought it five months ago, um, cash. And he was a construction business owner. And um, he said, I love that place. And I said, well, why did you 
put it up for sale. And he kind of shrugged his shoulders. And in the midst of his shrugged shoulder, I said, you can sign right here, sir. <laughs> I said, and he signed the papers and that's the property that we have today. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know if there's going to be a bug, big fuss about that ain't scriptural. Um, but I got my trailer, didn't I? Yeah. Amen. Amen. By faith. And so, yeah. so listen to me. I'm telling you that you could have as much as you want. Yeah. I could go on for miracles all day with yes. miracles all day. That's one of my husband's favorites. Yeah. Um, but I could go on all day about what God has done. So it, those of you that have written to me saying, I just don't know. I, I, I just I have a hard time believing for the impossible. I'm telling you, I have lived the impossible yes. and I'm living the impossible right now. Right. Amen. And so um, it says, serve this man as much as he wanted. At the same time, Queen Vashti gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. So at the same time as the second party, the bride of Christ didn't want to be out there with crackhead Jimmy, right? <laughs> she didn't want to be out there with B-side. She yeah. said, I'm not going to B-side, right? Yeah, right? She said, no, north side, no. I, I don't want to have side. service with yeah. them. We want to have separate services, south side and north side, right? Um, I don't want to go there. No, I'm not going to go to G4s and G5s. I'm not about to go to SEG. Nothing happening on SEG, said one of the ministers yeah. um, at one of the units. He said, no, we ain't doing nothing in SEG. We ain't doing nothing here. Yeah, you ain't doing nothing at all, right? If you don't want God's people, you don't want to help God's people, right. you ain't doing nothing at all. Come on, if you don't have the heart of God, you ain't doing nothing at all. And so at the same time, Queen Vashti was given a banquet for the women. Why was she given a banquet? Why was the church, why was the bride of Christ in another room while a party was going on? Mm. Come on, why, 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 why? She didn't want to rub shoulders with the dirty, with the nothings, mm. with the nobodies. She thought wow. she was too good for that. Goodness. On the seventh day of the feast, I'm trying to get through this, when King Xerxes was in high spirits because of the wine, because of the Spirit of God, Holy come on, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, come on. When King Xerxes was in high spirits because of the wine, he told seven eunuchs who attended him, I'm not going to try to read those names, <laughs> to bring Queen Vashti to him with the royal crown on her head. He wanted the nobles and all the other men to gaze on her beauty. I think I'm going to cut out right here and then we will continue it on the next podcast. Wow. All right. So we're going to play a song and then we'll be right back for a few minutes. And um, this is Dominico Gonzalez with some reggaeton. So um, we want to talk about just a little bit if we can, and I guess just take all the time, you know, honey, that you, you do. We on podcasts, when we did radio, okay, and I don't know how many are converted. I don't even know what's there because there's so many. But um, we periodically had done kind of updates on what's going on in the times um, yeah. because we are rushing into the last days. We're, we're there, you guys. And there's so much that um, you don't know is going on out here in finances and um, you know, with a vaccination and all those kinds of things. And so um, Jeremy periodically, you know, kind of updates us a little bit, and he's going to do some of that today. Sure, absolutely. So I'm going to start with this scripture in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, this is Jesus near the end of his ministry, and the disciples were coming to him, and they wanted to know what's going to happen, right? And they were asking about the temple. And, and Jesus sat down and called the disciples to him privately in verse three. And they, they'd asked him, tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return in the end of the world? And Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Wow. And we're there and we, we're Absolutely. seeing all that. In, but, I, you know, so many, they don't know, honestly, uh, about about the probably the lots of the earthquakes and things that were break, breaking records and things that have been happening. And and as it said, many will come saying I'm the Messiah. And yeah. we told you about that there is a guy in Israel that the rabbis yes. are um, believing is the Messiah. And he supposedly has been doing some miracles. Signs and wonders. And yeah. he does not, you know, they are, I mean, this is the Jews, the Orthodox Jews that yes. are, are saying he is the Messiah. They believe that. And following him, like throngs of people, like we see in The Chosen, right, yeah. are, are following him that way. And what I find, you know, even more so, he does not say, I am not the Messiah. 
right, he right. does not push that away. Absolutely not. Um, and so we know that he is not, but he does not push that away. And so the, this is something that has never happened. Right. That has never been where the, the Jews and the Orthodox Jews and the rabbis have said, there is the Messiah. We are communicating with him. He is here. That has never happened before. Right. And so there's so many things. What we're going to do uh, just over time as, as God gives us the opportunity, we're going to share on different some of these subjects, you know, that Jesus was referencing. But I want to just talk about real quick, he's talking about wars and rumors of wars. Uh, and, you know, we've already had two world wars in the last century, approximately. We are headed for the next one. And the hot spots, I'm going to read them to you now. I have Chris put them up on the map too. These are uh, taken from several different articles I found of the places where world war is most likely to break out. And you're going to see a recurring theme in almost all of these. The first one is between the U.S. and Iran. Iran is militant. They have oil money. They have money that our government has given them in the last 10 years. Lots. Billions and billions, billions. of dollars yes. in cash, right. which they've used to, to buy arms, wow. which they're using uh, to develop nuclear weapons. Uh, I was just thinking, it, it's like the open secret. The whole world knows that they're developing a nuclear weapon. And yet they say, but we're just using it to develop nuclear energy we're not going to develop a weapon. And, you know, they got their fingers crossed behind their back. Everybody knows that that's what they're doing. And we keep playing this charade. Uh, so they have UN weapons inspectors going in and they're saying, oh, yeah, they're doing pretty good. They've and by got the way, more. they call us the great Satan. They, yeah, they call us the great Satan yeah. and they call. And say uh, that we need to be wiped off the face of the earth. Absolutely. So, and yeah. they march in the public squares chanting that. Yeah. Death to America, death to America. So, um, of course, tensions have increased uh, even more over the last few years because there's been sanctions by our government against them due to their nuclear weapons program. Um, it has really begun to have effect, especially during the last presidency, is having significant effect on them financially. Um, they can, at any time they want, close down the Strait of Hormuz, uh, which is um, by the Gulf there, 30% of all the world's oil passes through it. Right. If they ever shut it down, imagine what will happen to the price of oil if 30% of the world's oil that we're using right now mm. is ever not able to make it to market. Of course, the, the price is going to skyrocket. Um, and all of these hot spots that I'm going to mention are all intertwined as well. Right. Because you don't just fight Iran. If you fight Iran, you're going to be fighting their allies which of course is Russia, which more and more is China mm. because China and Russia are buying oil uh, and other natural things from Iran, right? And they're, right. they're selling, they're, they're, they're developing these ties. Yeah, well, uh, Russia is currently buying a lot of the Shahid drones from Iran that Absolutely. they're using in Ukraine. That's 100% and, correct. And uh, yeah. Russia is about to provide some uh, really good Arms. equipment yes. to Iran for that. Yes, so, and of course, Iran is all over the Middle East. They're fostering militants as proxies against the U.S. and uh, Israel mm -hmm. as well. They're, they're also against Saudi Arabia, which has traditionally been a close U.S. ally in the Middle East. They're trying to overthrow the government, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of that is tied into the conflict ultimately between Iran and the great Satan, which is us. Mm -hmm. yes. So the next hot spot is Iran and Israel. Uh, of course, they're the little Satan, but they hate them more than they hate us. They, uh, the reason they hate us so much is because we have supported Israel. Right. Israel is the only democratic republic in the Middle East. They're surrounded on all sides. They fought a war the day after they announced themselves as a nation in 1948, and they fought multiple wars for their existence and survival since then. Uh, and they are determined to also wipe Israel off the face of the map. Right. They talk about pushing them into the sea, um, completely annihilating the whole um, Jewish nation. Many people don't know this, but a lot of the ideas that Hitler got about Jews and about wiping out the Jews came from Iran. Um, so there's been a death wish for God's chosen people for many, many years, for centuries, of course, but in this last century, it has accelerated. And Iran is the leading nation uh, that's out to get Israel. All around Israel, there's other lesser nations that can never defeat Israel in battle. Lebanon to the north, 
Syria, which is war torn and civil war uh, to the northeast, Jordan to the east, uh, Saudi Arabia to the southeast, and of course, Egypt. Uh, those are all nations that have fought against Israel. And of course, the Gaza Strip and um, uh, the West Bank inside Israeli territory are full of militants that are being provided arms, rockets, missiles by Iran. They're paid for by Iran. So if the next time a war pops off in the Middle East, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of rockets and missiles filed, uh, fired at Israel within the first few hours. And all of them came from Iran, ultimately. They're the ones who paid for it. We have defense treaties with Israel. So when I said that these hotspots are intertwined, you don't have a war between Iran and Israel without the United States being right. involved. And before you move on from Iran, because yeah. in the past couple of weeks, uh, because of Iran has had a habit lately of um, seizing merchant ships, the United States has increased their troop presence in the Middle East, and we've sent a lot of a lot more hardware, including F twenty twos, which is our you know premier right. fighter. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so I want to, um, you know, make sure that you guys know um, that all of what's going to happen is in the Bible. Okay. Absolutely. And so we have shared before, you know, on some of this stuff and what was going on um, in other areas. And um, I got a letter or two, of course, um, saying, you know, we don't need this bad news. We, we need good news, but that we need to be informed. Right. right? And we also want to know where we're, uh, where we're at in the times. Yes. Okay. And, and the Bible pinpointed um, not only what would happen um, in the weather, but nations and yes. what nations would come against Israel and what nation. You know, so it has yes, right. exact things happening. And that is why um, we're sharing it because it is following exactly right. what the and, Bible and says. It's, it's a marker. You remember they, they, Jesus talked about this stuff and right. they said, what are the signs of your coming? Right. And he said, when you begin to see all these things come past, then know that it's near. Yes. I mean, so Jesus definitely wanted us to pay Absolutely. attention. He is specifically talking about the fig tree, which is a representation of the nation of right. Israel being reborn in 19. 1948. Um, so the other hot spot, another one of the hot spots is the U.S. and Turkey. Turkey has been an ally there in NATO, but we have significant beef right now with Turkey uh, due to the Kurdish minority that is in uh, Turkey. They're the number one opposition group to the dictator of Turkey, Erdogan. Uh, and he wants to wipe them all out. And we have been resisting that. And so because of that, there's a battle brewing in Turkey, Syria, and Iraq that, of course, is going to spill over into Israel if it ever pops off. Uh, and the United States has these weird alliances with right. different of those nations that is going to just be a mess. Yeah. You know, it's going to, there's no way to avoid If you look at mess. a map, it's crazy. And where we're at is in the northwestern part of Syria. We still have troops and stuff there. Right. And that is surrounded by Turkey, Iraq, and Syria. I mean, we're and right. And Russian soldiers. And Russian soldiers. We're <laughs> right. right smack dab in the middle of it. Absolutely. It's just a, uh, it, it's a mess that's waiting to happen. Another hot spot is Kashmir, which is a Muslim region of India that used to belong to Pakistan and got incorporated into India. And India and Pakistan both have nuclear weapons pointed at each other mm. a few miles apart from each other over this one province. And so it's, you know, part of the problem when you have a uh, minority group that has a different faith, a different language, a different culture that you're trying to force to assimilate into the nation. And so because of that, they want to be a part of Pakistan. India is trying to hold on to them. Um, and it is just a war that's waiting to happen. And we have strange alliances with right. both of those nations, uh, as well as economic interests with both of those nations. There's really no way that that, would, that war would start that's not ultimately going to implicate the other larger players like the United States, Russia, and China. Now, these are in no particular order because I personally think that this is the one that's becoming more and more likely every day. Um, a war between the United States and Russia. And right. you hear some people say, what can Russia do against the United States? Because, you know, we're a superpower and they have just completely fallen. Look, if they struck the United States with a first strike, nuclear strike, which they have hypersonic weapons that are able to exceed the speed of sound, that are able to evade any of our missile defenses, they have submarines that are able to crawl on the floor of the ocean undetected that could be just a few miles off the shore of the United States in the Gulf of Mexico, West Coast, East Coast. 
by the time they launched, it would be six minutes or less before there was a nuclear impact. And if they do it, there's an old saying about if you're going to get in a fight with a king, you better cut his head off, right? right. Um, so if we are ever attacked, and we'll have to talk about this on another program, all the reasons why the idiotic stuff going on in Ukraine it could very well lead to us right. being attacked by Russia. Right. Uh, because there are no good guys in Russia and Ukraine. And if people think that Ukraine is the good guy and Russia is the bad guy, right. I'm not saying Russia is the good guy, but nobody's good over there. Right. Uh, and the United States is trying to pick a fight, it seems like, with Russia and provoke them into a war. Yeah, and, and Russia is very vocal about this. Absolutely. They're, they keep saying, we will use nuclear weapons if we have to. And what they do is so much different than here, but I'm not sure if you guys know, they have civil defense drills periodically where they run all of their citizens in the big cities underground into, into shelters. Into nuclear shelters, yeah. We don't do that here. And so they're preparing for it, whereas our, our nation is just like, eh. Well, and, you know, it goes without saying that you can't talk about these, these issues without acknowledging the fact that we do not have an honest media in the United States anymore. Right. It's a globalist, corporate-controlled right. media. Uh, they do not tell the truth. They talk about things that are irrelevant. They don't talk about the things that are important. And they're not talking about the things that they're saying openly in Russia right. about war coming with the United States. And that's one of the reasons why we want to share it with our listeners, because you need to be aware. It's interesting, you know, you're talking about, uh, we, we had some people write, Jesus mentioned current events all the time throughout his ministry. He talked about, hey, you know, that tower in Siloam fell. And, you know, what about this thing that Herod did? He was talking about current events because he wanted them to know how their faith was going to be affected by everyday life. Um, so U.S. Russia could very well become a war Ukraine could spring into a war between NATO and Russia, which, of course, drags the United States because we're the dominant uh, military force in NATO. Um, so that's one. I'm going to go through them quickly. Afghanistan could easily become a world war because uh, the, we, we left, as you know, uh, many of you last year, we left $80 billion worth of our weapons for the yeah. Taliban to take over, many of which they gave at discounted prices to China. They never paid for them, but they got paid for them by China. My right. They gave the base there that we left to China. Wow. So now China has a strategic, an extremely strategic mm. air base in the middle of the Middle East that they never would have had if we'd done it right. But the United States uh, is a shadow and a shell of its former military right. power. Uh, so the Taliban, of course, uh, ruled Afghanistan before, and they're ruling it again. It easily is going to lead to the persecution of Christians and the killing of tens of thousands. The U.S. and North Korea could also become a nuclear war at any time. The dictator of North Korea, uh, whose people are starving, needs war because that's the only thing that maintains his regime's power. And he does have nuclear weapons. It's uh, well known that he does. Uh, we have 50,000 troops in South Korea that have been there for 70 years off and on. Um, and if he ever attacks South Korea, which they state they want to take back over South Korea right. and incorporate it in one nation, uh, we will be at war with North Korea. Um, what would that do? Well, it would immediately spiral into U.S. versus China versus North Korea right. versus Russia versus Japan on our side. And, um, I mean, it just would very quickly accelerate. And, and that's what happens. We expect people to act rationally. We know the dictator of North Korea is insane. Yeah. He's out of his mind. He's probably con completely controlled by demons. So there's really no logical reason for him not to push the button at some point. Um, maybe just to make himself famous or historical or whatever. But, um, you know, we're not dealing with rational people. Um, so it's really a miracle that a war hasn't already started there. And the last one, and one of the ones that I think is most likely to occur also, is the United States fighting China over Taiwan. When the communists won in 1949, the Republican government of uh, China fled to the island of Taiwan and set up their base there. Uh, it was known as the Republic of China for many years. Nobody recognized mainland China, the Communist Party, but as they've grown in military and economic power, more and more nations have stopped recognizing Taiwan as the legitimate power and have recognized China as legitimate power. And China is very vocal about wanting to take Taiwan back. 
we have studiously avoided stating that we would defend Taiwan militarily until President Joe Biden said a few months ago that if they attacked, that we would respond. So he basically drew a line in the sand. And now, if they attack Taiwan, we're going to probably be obligated to defend them militarily, which will mean a war with China. And because China knows that, kind of like Russia, they know they can't beat us in a square up fight. So what they would probably do is they would do a first strike like Japan did at Pearl Harbor. Strike us first before take us out, cut off the head of the snake uh, before we could respond. And if you'll notice that all eight of the hot spots that I mentioned all involve the United States. Yeah. yeah. Every single one of them would, would end up implicating the U.S., in a war very, and there, I mean, there's things that we're not talking about. Yeah. You know, things like China has brought up large amounts of our land. They yeah. own it. Um, and, and there's so much going on with China yeah. here already. Well, I just sent Jeremy so, an article today. I'm not sure if you even saw it. Russia and China have parked large portions of their Navy off the coast of Alaska. And this just happened last night. Right. And now they're saying that we're being forced to respond somehow in a in a big way. So, I mean... They're posturing for it, both of them right. together. So there's a lot going on. As you can see, my husband is an information center <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, and there is a lot to say. And there's, yeah. you know, a, a lot that people don't know are going on and it's not on the mainstream news. They've got you, uh, you know, busy with silly things, you know, yeah. um, and being entertained and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, soap opera with uh, Hollywood and all that. And, right. you know, they, they're, right. they're, they're keeping you distracted from the real stuff that's going on. And so um, it is important because we are in the end days and... Um, you know, things are happening. So why don't you pray us out, honey? Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, that we can have as much as we want, Lord, that it's your desire to let every single one of us get as much of your spirit and to see you move in a powerful way in our lives. God, there's no limits on the wine that you have. And God, we just ask that you would begin to break down all the boundaries that we have erected or that religion has erected in our mind of what our walk with you can look like. God, expand our horizons and our vision, God. Lord, I pray that you'd awaken us all around us to the need everywhere on B-side and in SEG and just down the hall, God, that you would show us who needs to hear your voice and that you would activate us by your spirit. God, we thank you for what you're doing and that in the midst of this season, you decided to have a party just for us and you called us and it's in your son's name. We thank you, God. Amen. 